Morning all. I had a very, very interesting game last night in the Hertfordshire League, Division 1. Barnet Elizabethans were playing away. And we're playing against Hemel Hampstead. And I was playing John Sharp, who is a very, very dangerous player, who have, has so far in the league prior to this game had a rating performance similar to mine, 2-1-4. And yet it only won one more game than he lost, but the people he beat included um, international master Richard Tozer, and also Ewan Ward, who's over 210. So two very, very big scalps in the league. So quite a dangerous, formidable opponent who has crushed me in the past as well. And actually, uh, uh, I sh there are some excellent games he sent me, which I would like to cover on the channel soon as well, uh, from, from past seasons. Uh, so this is a very uh, interesting, uh, dynamic, aggressive player. Uh, he played e4, and I was a bit frightened of actually playing Sicilian, because he's very, very good in Sicilians, uh, especially with annoying bishop b5s. So I actually played the Kara Khan, which echoes my game against uh, the other match against uh, Hemel Hampstead, against Steve Law, where I played the Karakon and managed to get away with it and uh, win that game, uh, which has also been video annotated earlier on this channel. Here he played c4, and I actually chose what Livebook considers as the second most popular move. Instead of d5, I played e5, trying to keep it more quieter and positional, a bit like an old Indian defence, potentially if white plays d4, and white did play d4, so d6. So I'm going to set up quickly like this. I'm not going to bother for him chattering. That was my idea. I was, I'm going to strong point e5. And uh, he played knight c3. Now I played knight d7, knight f3, now knight g f6. So simple development. Now here, usually players with white play bishop e2. And this is already, the engine's not very impressed with this move. In Viper, it's only three games of this. Bishop e2, we've got 1500, over 1500. g3, 144. h3, 19. d5, 11. But this, this move comes down the list with only three games. And the engine goes from about 0 0.44 to 0 0.13. And I think there's a reason for this, that Bishop g5 is prone tactically to some issues. If that's going to be playing Bishop e7, there's always these tactics to look out for later, as well as the kicking the bishop. And if the bishop's going to go like this, it can sometimes be stranded on g3. So there's a few considerations if bishop g5 really is effective here. Uh, I played bishop e7. So already it looks, from an engine point of view, believe it or not, as almost equal this position. Bishop e2, uh, a castle. Sorry, sorry, he didn't play bishop e2. He, con he continued, curiously, with another move which kind of doesn't impress engines and is, is not, is kind of, we've gone out of territory totally with this next move, queen d2. And you might think, well, doesn't it look fairly sensible? Well, really, it seems now that, especially I think the knight e4 tactic echoing against the queen, black's actually been given a, a small advantage now by engines. Uh, the, the latent tactics of this bishop and this queen location, it just doesn't bode well. But can that actually be demonstrated? Uh, I was actually considering in this position already things like h6, uh, but this is probably too ambitious to play g5 here. I think it's too loosening. I suspected it would be too loosening anyway. Uh, so something like this. I don't think, I think g4 is really pushing it. Just d takes and could leave my position in a wreck. That's, that looks pretty unpleasant. But the thing is, I was already considering things like that based on the bishop. It doesn't work out that well here. Although apparently in this position, no, black does is okay with e takes. This is just a variation. Knight takes d4, knight c5. Black is fretting, knight takes e4. So you see that the bishop is, is tactically just as a liability as the queen location here. If knight f takes e4 is actually on the cards. For example, bishop e2, knight takes, bishop takes, does queen takes, yeah. And if if bishop takes, um, well, if knight takes, then there's uh, bishop takes. So you see that tactically, it's not working out very well. There's ac bad echoes here with the queen and bishop location. But anyway, I, I didn't try and exploit this right here. I just castled, castled. And now rook d1, which again, it doesn't really, 
okay, white doesn't castle quickly now. Okay, we're rook d1, of course. And I play h6. And it's interesting uh, here now. If bishop h4, I really thought knight takes e4 was on the cards. But I'm not entirely sure. We looked at this after the game. Knight takes e4 might be okay for white. We were checking this out. Knight takes, bishop takes, because d6 drops. But maybe knight takes is better, apparently. Apparently knight takes is better first, then take on d6. And, and it should be about equal. Apparently it's about equal in this position. We were looking at knight takes d6 here, because I thought actually, if ever this default opens up, then knight takes c8. So if takes here, for example, takes bishop f6, so the dark square bishop is a bit, a bit of a pain though. Uh, so this, this apparently is better for black slightly. Look at that dark square bishop. Uh, but anyway, he played actually bishop e3, which allows me a move which we've seen recently in a Carlson loss, knight g4. Um, here getting the dark square bishop. In in the game against uh, Rajabov, it was getting the light square bishop while I was able to take on g4. But nevertheless, I really enjoyed getting the dark square bishop here just to get a small, uh, what I thought was a small positional advantage actually, the bishop pair. And the dark square bishop in this position in particular seems quite handy. So we see bishop e2, knight takes e3. I thought f takes e, well actually the engine suggests f takes might be better than queen takes. But I thought possibly bishop h4 just to prompt a weakness. So say g3, that looks okay for black. If takes well, it's it's an interesting position. I think black's doing okay. So um, here, knight takes e3, queen takes e3 was played. And I do play what, actually, the, the engine kind of likes this move, queen b6. I'm putting some pressure on the dark squares. Um, but now my opponent plays g4. And I, I really thought queen takes b2 was too dangerous. Uh, what I actually thought was um, this... Uh, rook b1 I thought queen a3 and I thought knight d5 was winning because of knight takes e7 this isn't the case white um, can be faced with this check queen a5 check saves the day for black so that's the miscalculation actually I could have taken the pawn but I I just I didn't like I don't like taking b pawns in principle so I really maybe that's why I didn't really um, wasn't really paying attention there because I thought well okay if he just castles then he's then he's got some compensation but no apparently this is the way to go and test this g4 it looks as though white's like kind of weakened himself uh, quite radically and um, if there's no clear compensation even here well now um, it's you know protecting e7 is, is key so if castles and just protect e7 straight off the bat against this rook b1 and knight d5. So apparently black's black's doing okay here. So anyway, I um my opponent actually played g4. It's a bit radical. And I, I was kind of I thought, wow, okay, this is this is um something interesting which echoes a grandmaster comment I once heard. Uh a the grandmaster said he, he likes when people go for him. He, you know, especially wins when that happens. I think if someone goes for you for an attack, statistically they're often creating weaknesses, and tactics can backfire on them. I think that's the case here. This is potentially it looks scary uh, to use this G file, but I've got the dark square bishop. I should be quite strong on the dark squares. This attack, in theory, from a Steinitzian perspective, shouldn't work. Steinitz said. Uh, basically, you know, if you haven't got the advantage, you haven't really got a right to go for the attack. I thought my opponent hasn't really got a right to go for the attack. As I haven't got too many weaknesses right now, I've got the bishop pair. And I can counteract quite quickly in the centre to open up things, and I do. E takes, knight takes. Now here, actually, the engine suggests that either taking or knight c5, so maybe this is a bit dodgy what I played. Um, is it actually mentioned? Not even mentioned. Looking several moves down, it's not mentioned what I played. Well, no, it is finally. About the seventh move down. Okay, there's not much in it actually. What I play is quite decent, I think. Now on this depth. 
if we consider taking on b2 here, I mean, it just seems a bit materialistic um, and looking a little bit dangerous actually. Although there's a backfire on the dark squares a little bit. Now, here it looks as though this should be okay for black. Okay, so that is possible. Um, I actually played knight e5, just, just striking at g4. I thought that um, if f3, maybe maybe bishop h4 check is useful to disrupt the king. Uh, so my opponent actually now continued with b3. And he's kind of weakening some more dark squares, particularly the c3 knight. Also, of course, this pawn. But is it ludicrous to take a pawn with your king behind it? I thought it was quite justified here. I, I stepped it off. I also thought that um, rook g1, this bishop, I can insert bishop g5 potentially, although I'm not entirely sure this is the best. Sorry, I'm attacking the queen. Bishop takes, this, this is the one, bishop takes, bishop takes, here. I can insert bishop g5. So if, if rook, sorry, f4, there's bishop h4 check and this position I can just snap off the exchange and there's no queen h6 so that's why I thought it was fairly safe I've got this bishop g5 to just kind of lock up g5 even more and get another tempo if he does want to sack the exchange on f3 I just mentioned bishop h4 check although we looked at this after the game has been not here bishop g5 say king e2 G5. Now this position might offer white a bit more practical chances, but it seems fairly safe at the moment. I think Black's got resources. I don't think the attack has a right to particularly work. By the way, I've got a bit of a cold coming up. Pardon me. Um, bit snivelly. Okay. So this position, yeah, it, it looks as though there shouldn't be too much to worry about. Um, if say H4, Bishop F4. Black's looking forward to f5, so if the king tries to come out, still f5, it looks as though black should get a fun game here. Let's look at that dark square control, dark square pressure, quite large. g7 look quite quite secure. So if we go back, knight takes g4, my opponent played queen g3, and now instead of moving the knight, uh, I don't think this would be particularly good, moving the knight back. Knight f5, and it's sort of helping justify white a little bit. Then he's just opened up this g file. No, I actually counter strike on the dark squares with my dark square bishop, which is my asset. I actually played bishop f6, and uh, now bishop takes g4 was played. Bishop takes g4, queen takes g4, and now bishop takes d4, so I'm hitting these two. So I thought this is going to be okay for me. Surely I'm winning another pawn potentially. Um, and my opponent now played rook d3. And I thought it was a little bit risky maybe to take here. I'm, I'm getting a bit greedy if I took here. But of course the engine thinks that's okay. Um, if king f1. It doesn't seem as though there's too much going on actually on g7. This, this should be very good for black. So that seems entirely possible. I actually played a different continuation, which is also quite good. I think bishop takes here, simplifying a bit. And now queen d4. So I'm protecting g7, and I'm going to come around for the center soon with these sort of moves. So rook g3, and I play f5 here, trying to get to my opponent's king. Um, now on e takes, check. King f1, rook e4, this this kind of thing should be okay for black. Uh, I was looking at also um, what else does um, white do here? Um, I had in mind also like just taking here simply. This this should be okay for black with the check. So this position, okay, it's, it's a pawn up. 
Um, it sh should be winnable. Pawn up potentially. Well, the chances to win are with black, but it's not. It's not. There's a lot of fight left in the game. Uh, so actually, my opponent didn't take that. Maybe that's absolutely best to take that. Because um, I, I actually wasn't banking on this this kind of maneuver. So that that is a very very good maneuver uh, for maximum advantage. To just just check and then rookie four for rook f4. That that is great because it's fragmented the pawns. No, okay. So anyway, my opponent actually played queen g6. A bit adventurous. And so I'm winning a second pawn with check, going back to protect g7. And now swinging the rook in. Okay, he's got the g file, but it's a bit slow, isn't it? Because I thought I was going to make my opponent if he's got nothing concrete. So rook hg1. I have to be careful, though. And of course, there's queen h6 to factor in. I play rook f7 here. Um, now, I just I just thought if queen takes h6, then rook e2, it, it seems to be like mating white. Uh, without too many checks available from white here, I think these just run out and just well, I just munch everything. Uh, so queen h6 is out of the question. Queen takes h6. So he played queen h5, and there's actually a little subtle threat from white here. Can you see what white is actually threatening here? A little cheapo response. He's also guarding e2, of course. So what would what would you consider white is actually threatening to factor in to your move? If I gave you 10 seconds here, can you spot what white is now threatening? Okay, white's actually threatening taking here, which might be quite annoying to taking here. So I've got to be careful. I play check and I tried to calculate all this all the way to the end, but I had some difficulty here at the moment. Queen takes a two check, and now King c three. And I was a bit worried actually at one moment, to be honest, here, because my checks kind of run out, and I'm left with these three guys looking at my king a bit, just with the rook on f seven, because uh, my checks are going to run out if Queen a five. King d3, my checks do run out. Um, but this position is not lost for black. Okay, there's there's a dangerous threat here, but actually apparently rook e4, and that's okay for black. But anyway, I played actually, um, I didn't play this check, and I carefully checked rook e2, just in case I was getting mated with queen f7 or rook g7. Now on rook g7 I didn't see any checks because the rook's covering e8 from this. So here, and the queen doesn't seem to have any checks because the pawn is stopping the check here. These pawns are defending. Uh, so I thought that was okay. So I've actually got my own threat now, queen d2 mate. So queen takes h6, protects d2, uh, but now I just played check here. And I thought this is fun because uh, if King d3, then I just take here. If King d4, then that. Uh, but in the game, actually, um, King d4 was played. I play actually a check here. King goes to e3, and now I check here, and now it's mate and one, Queen e4, <coughs> checkmate. Yeah, I, th I think my my opponent actually just self destructed really after losing the dark squad bishop, but it seems it just seems a little bit suspect anyway. Bishop g five against this particular system, uh, even here it seems as though, especially here, I I already thought intuitively I must be okay here because of these latent tactical possibilities. I don't think this is the right setup for white. The engine suggests black's already doing quite well even after just queen d two. And this kind of matches my intuition, Phil, here, that this looks really tasty. If bishop takes h6, I, by the way, this is I think this is going to be just harmless for knight h7. So yeah, I was, I was kind of pleased with this game. I didn't realise it, it would work out so well. My opponent played very, very un 
compromising chest though to his great credit and that's, I guess that helps explain he's got two major scalps in this league probably probably I assume they're fantastic attacking games and he's got some there are some games I'd like to cover of his from from last season and seasons I think before so um so look out for John Sharp uh, but last night yeah uh, maybe he he overdid it trying to crush me and created some weaknesses which I was able to tap into on the night okay comments or questions on YouTube thanks very much